Hi everyone, it's Zach from Peeling Back Data, and today we're going to be looking at multi-panel plots using ggplot2 and ggpubber. To begin with, we're going to be looking at using facet grid and facet wrap. So to begin with, like normal, we're going to call library and then ggplot2. If you don't have this package, simply go tools, install packages, type ggplot2 here, and then click install. So now we want to run that. The next thing that we're going to do is load in the data set that we're looking at, which in this case will be diamonds. I'm going to take a subset of diamonds because it's such a large data set. So I'm going to call this diamonds subset. And that's going to be equal to diamonds. And then on the rows, we're going to create a sequence from 1 to 50,000, i is going to be equal 100, and keep all of the columns in the data set. So now we have our subset. So like last time, we can do a, say, a simple scatter plot looking at two variables. So in this case, we've got the data set here, which looks at different qualities of diamonds for a lot of observations. And we might want to look at the relationship between carrot and price. And where facet grid and facet wrap come in is they allow us to now see a relationship, that relationship for each color, for example, or any other factor that we might want to look at, which may be cut. So let's look at cut actually. So we can go ggplot data equals diamond subset. On the aesthetic, we're going to have x is equal to the carrot, y is equal to the price, and we're going to now add g on point to make it a scatter plot. So we can see simply what that looks like now. Now we want to take a look at how cut comes into the equation. So now we add facet grid and that's going to be faceted by or created into panels by cut. So now we can see what the result is there. So let's zoom in quickly and we can see how that looks. Now what I like to do with these types of plots is what I facet by I also color by that. So I'll also say color equals cut. And now we can see that result. So now it sort of clearly sees the relationship between price and carrot for each cut of diamond. Now facet wrap is very similar to facet grid, but we can also specify now, number of row and number of columns that we want to show. So let's say number of rows equals 2. We can see what that's now done. This is now given us two rows for those different panels. Now, another thing to look at, which applies to both facet grid and facet wrap, is, we, is the scales. So in this case, the scales are consistent for both the X and the Y. But let's say we want to have unique scales for each panel. So we can simply do that now by coming over here and we can say scales equals free. So this will make the scales free in both directions, like so. So now we can see this scale is different than that scale and so on. And if we want to specify, say, just doing scales free for just one variable, so say, for example, just on the Y, instead of scales there, you can just say scales is free X. Sorry, saying on the Y, so it should be free Y. It 
and now we can see how that looks. So we've got three scales on the y-axis, but consistent for each one on the x-axis. Cool. So that now nicely shows how facet grid and facet wrap work. And that's just a nice basic introduction. And you, of course, can change what you want to do this on. So anything that's a factor in your data set, which has a nice low amount of levels, say between three and 10, you can do faceting like this. And generally, if you've got higher number of levels, you're going to want to use facet wrap and change the number of rows or columns to make it a bit easier to look at. Now let's look at using GG Arrange in GG Puppet. So what this is good for is displaying multiple GG plot objects in one image, and this allows you to see two different representations of say the same data or just combine multiple images into one figure that you might use in a report. So let's use this plot that we have already. And we're gonna call that P1. Now we can create a second plot. And this, in this case, it might just be a box plot. So I'm going to just copy this code that we've used there. I'm going to change the aesthetics because we only need one aesthetic for a box plot or one in the either the x or y direction, in this case y, which will be price. I'm going to change that to be GM box plot. We're still going to facet wrap on cut. This time we're just going to have one row. And we'll make that consistent as well with the previous plot. And in this case, I don't think we want the scales to be free at all. So we can have consistency amongst the different panels. So let's go ahead and run that and make sure we've run, we've run P1 as well. Now we get to using GG Arrange. So to do this, we simply call GG Arrange. And then now we simply just list the plots that we want to use. So in this case, it's P1 and P2. And now we specify the number of rows that we want to have. So in this case, I want the number of rows to be two. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. So now we can sort of nicely see we've got a box plot on the bottom for each cut of the diamond. And that's showing how that distribution is for price. And then on top, we've got a nice scan plot showing the relationship between price and the carrot for each cut. Now, if you wanted to use this in a report, you would also want to have some sort of labeling up here in the top left hand corner. And GG Arrange can automatically do that for you. So you can say labels equals auto. And if you use all capital auto, you'll get all capital letters. And if you use lowercase auto, you'll get all, all lowercase letters. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. So now we can see that we've got A and B in the top left hand corner here of each plot. And this means that you can easily reference it in your report or whatever you are writing. So that nicely summarizes facet grid, facet wrap, and GG range. And this is just a nice basic introduction into how that all works. If you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and address them. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Hi, so this is just to address a comment that was made on my last video. And I'll specifically about including two trend lines in one plot, along with two legends and two R squared coefficients. So now I'm gonna quickly show how to do that. So using the data set cars as before, library, ttp, misc, as well as of course, 
I should have here library ggplot2. Make sure you have both of those loaded. And then I had my formula here. And now, now we come to the ggplot part of it. Now I get to trend lines, you need to have two different data sets that you're working with. So here I've just specified it to be one in which the speed's greater than 15, and one in which the speed is less than 15. I've just created two separate GM smooths there, and I've colored one of them to be black. And now similarly, down here with stat poly equation, I use matching data sets. So this data set is the same as that data set, and this data set is the same as this data set. And to make sure that these stat poly equations don't overlap with each other, for the second one I've used v just equal to v2, which will push that legend to be a little bit lower than the other one. And we can see what this result is over here now. So you can see we've got two separate trend lines going through this one data set for different subsets. And we've got here, we've got the equations fully displayed with two different R squared values. This data here could be anything that you wanted and you might include say maybe more of the data set or less. So there could be some sort of overlap here. And that's going to still work just fine. I hope that answers the question that was made in the comments. And I hope anyone watching this also gets something out of that. Thank you very much.